America in Perspective. David Sokol is here. David, great to see you. Glad to be here. Thank you, Maria. So you've got investments across the economy. I want to get your take on what you saw from the Fed yesterday and what this means for the broader economy. Well, it's interesting. Uh, if you just look at it on one side, what the Fed's doing, you know, I think makes sense. Uh, they've got it. They've got to slow the economy. The problem is we've got a government that <clears throat> continues extraordinary deficit spending. And, uh, it, you know, it's on one hand, we raise interest rates to try and convince the average American not to spend as much money. Uh, we're going to see people lose their jobs. And then on the other hand, the government passes a bill that says Deficit Reduction Act or, or Inflation Reduction Act, which purely throws more money into the economy. So. Yeah. It's, it's odd to me that money from the average American going into the economy apparently pushes inflation, but government doesn't. Yeah. It's, it's ridiculous. Well, he actually admitted yesterday when he was talking about the Inflation Reduction Act being this game changer for climate. He pretty much admitted that it's not an Inflation Reduction Act. It's actually a climate bill. Bob Nardelli here joining the conversation as well. And, Bob, I want to talk about this FedEx warning. Yes. Uh, you spoke with the CEO of FedEx, the uh, founder Fred, Fred of FedEx, Smith. Fred Smith. Your thoughts on what that FedEx warning warning told us. Yeah, well, I've known Fred for a long time, Maria, and uh, he, he's always been very forthright, and he delivered a very powerful and accurate message. He said that between FedEx and Carol Tomei at UPS, that they handle about 12 percent of the U.S. GDP. That is a definite signal that we're heading south. We're in a downward spiral, and, and it's going to cause continual compression, David, to your point, on, on consumers, on all these businesses. And if we have, uh, you know, a rail strike, it's even going to be worse. It's going to further compound the problem that we were living through during the, during the COVID crisis. Yeah. yeah, well, every business we're involved with, you're seeing the slowdown. Obviously, mortgages and banking, but the shipping industry, uh, you're seeing the, the, the log jam break. Not because, unfortunately, uh, the government stepped in and helped the ports get better, but just because uh, the supply chains are starting to get straightened out. And, in fact, demand is, is shrinking. Yeah, and FedEx uh, reports after the bell tonight. The company warned last week that global shipping demand is weakening. It's expecting a worldwide recession. You're saying all of your business is in, involved in shipping are seeing that kind of slowdown. How severe a recession would you expect? Well, I, I, what I really fear is stagflation. You know, we've got very significant inflation. It's continuing to be fueled by the by government spending globally, um, and then a severe downturn in, in global economy. Um, that's from my perspective, the worst of all worlds for the average average American, for sure. We're seeing a deterioration in housing already because yes. the 30-year mortgage rate is at six and a quarter percent, highest level yesterday since November 2008. That's a more than double yes. from where mortgage rates were just a year ago. Yeah, and that's that's one of the key indicators in our economy, right, uh, David and, and Maria? When you see housing decline, it just sucks everything else down with it. You know, certainly building supplies, labor associated with it, the ability to get into first time buyers. It just is a compounding effect uh, on our economy. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and, and Bob, Bill, Bob, you've been involved with uh, heavy industrial for, for decades. Every, every time interest rates go up, uh, you know, people have to th rethink what they're doing, you know, whether it's a car or refrigerator, et cetera. And so I think you're going to see particularly uh, heavy industrial goods uh, be under real pressure. So what are the other areas that are real vulnerable right here? You are you have a family office with investments in manufacturing, energy, shipping, banking, venture capital. And we're seeing an across the board impact at, from the stock market, certainly. So what's most important for us to look at? Well, I think where we're going now, again, with stagflation is, is the biggest concern. Um, if, we, if we end up with a global uh, reduction in GDP um, with this type of inflation, which, by the way, can hang around for quite a while, uh, it seems uh, incongruous that you could have inflation when the economy is shrinking, but it, it, back in the 70s it happened in, in a big way. That's, I think that's our biggest concern. You yeah. talk in your book about ESG a bit. I want to talk about that. Environmental, social governance. There is a whole of government approach forcing investment managers to get on board, cut off fossil fuel companies in terms of lending, and go green. Your reaction? Well, I think two things. One, frankly, I think it's largely an effort by some folks who make a lot of money by getting uh, uh, pension funds, if you will, that are that are woke uh, to invest in their funds uh, by pandering to this notion that somehow ESG <clears throat> is going to change something. There are no standards. And frankly, from my perspective, and Bob, I'd be curious about yours, over the 40 years I've been in business, I've seen corporate boards get less effective 
by all this this nonsense. Uh, you know, I was the, the chairman and CEO of NetJets, and uh, would any of, of our customers at NetJets want me to select pilots based upon their sexual orientation or based upon their qualifications to be pilots? Yeah. Um, and and uh, yeah, there's nothing wrong with diversity at all, but I guess my fundamental view of ESG is you solve discrimination by not discriminating. <laughs> uh, you don't solve it by reverse discrimination. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for that. Yeah, yeah, David, you did a marvelous job with with NetJet. I mean, what a what a fabulous turnaround. And, and so early, and now it's uh, the private jet industry is, I guess, booming. I want to get your take on that too. Yeah, and ESG, Maria and, and David. You know, I saw Barry Diller's interview, and he said it's a joke. Uh, to your point, David, that corporations are being forced and, and bullied into coming up with fictitious numbers to try to meet some of the uh, guidelines that are being written uh, almost every 24 hours. So uh, we all want better climate, right? We all want a better climate, but I think some of these artificial measurements that we're trying to create to meet some of these demands is, is really burdensome. Billions of dollars being spent here versus on new technology. Yeah, and, and America was built from our foundation on a meritocracy, giving people freedom of opportunity, uh, equality of opportunity, and then letting people expose their natural talents uh, throughout, throughout whatever they do. Uh, I watched a gentleman a couple months ago uh, playing the harmonica at a large event, and he was fant fantastic. There were two major entertainers on each side of him. Um, he got a standing ovation. He played for 15 straight minutes, and I found out afterwards he gets about $25,000 per, per event. That's America. I yeah, mean, that's great. His talents have shown he's the best at what he does, and God bless him. Yeah. That's what we need to get back to, and not this, uh, not appointing someone to the United States Department of Transportation, a secretary that doesn't have a single qualification to be on that, on that position. He's handling $2 trillion of our dollars. And his only qualification is that he's, he's his sexual orientation. Unbelievable. And, you know, Pete Buttigieg was missing in action during the massive supply crisis going on. Uh, and, and it impacted the economy. He was on paternity leave. Now we're seeing another issue with the rail strikes. I mean, how impactful will a strike from the rail, rail workers be? And, and what do you think about the fact that they want a raise of 14.1 percent? And a Biden apparently is agreeing to it in a tentative deal uh, with the unions. He's not going to fight the unions well and think about this the the, the longshoremen in, in california are talking about going on strike they've been negotiating purportedly for the last two years it's one of the highest paid unions in the world and after the mess we just had in the port system in california you know in in, in normal business that would that would get you a, a, a a lowered pay, not an increased pay. Well, I, I wonder if we're going to see more strikes because, you know, once one union gets what they want, then, you know, the nurses, the, the health care workers have already also uh, threatened more strikes. And once you see, you know, the demands being uh, given into, don't more industries say, well, we're going to go on strike. We want higher wages, too. Well, and inflation will drive that as well. Yeah. You know, the worker needs to needs to catch up and they're not. And so, yeah, I think we're, we're again, that's that whole cycle of of inflation that can continue to grow even though the economy's going into recession. So real quick, you ran NetJets and it was so successful on your watch. Today we're seeing lots of people choose private travel. It's becoming more accessible for the average person out there. How do you characterize that? What, what's your sense of what's going on? Well, for those that can afford a, a private aviation, it's a phenomenal way to travel. Uh, the, the sad part is 90, 95% of America can't afford private aviation. And I, I, I do think the American airline industry needs to get its act together because every family member I have when they're traveling, to whether it's a vacation, they're coming for some family reunion, whatever, they're delayed, the, the flights are canceled, et cetera. They took a lot of money from the government during COVID, and I think they have an obligation to get their, their systems back on you know, proper order. Are you allocating capital any differently in this environment? Yes, yeah, definitely. Uh, you, know, you have to watch you know, where, where the trends are going, um, trying to stay away from, from uh, areas that, where the consumer is going to be the primary driver. All right, we'll leave it there. David, it's good to see you. Thank you. You too, Maria. Thanks so much. David Thanks. Sokol joining us. Along with